Okay, uh, the second speaker uh, of the session is Spesi Makatini from Vets University. He will be presenting about Stimela 2.0, uh, containerization and workflow management for data pipelines. Uh, the floor is yours, Pe. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm specifically, as the interest has just said, and I'm gonna be just talking about uh, Stimela and some of the improvements we have made over uh, the last couple of months. So just to give you some context about how Stimela uh, came about, came to be, uh, it was about six years ago when I started my PhD. Uh, I was given a few tasks by, uh, by Oleg, who was my, my supervisor, and one of those tasks was to improve on his record-breaking dynamic range image of five million to one. The second task was to um, uh, do simulations to optimize the SKA one mid layout. And the third task was to basically use, again, simulations to quantify how direction-dependent effects would affect a survey if you were stacking many images from different observations. And what I quickly uh, found, and I had like multiple platforms to do this. It was uh, the South African CHPC. The next resource was uh, the Google Cloud Platform, uh, servers at Rhodes, and um, AWS. And what was the issue was that I would be able to make the pipeline maybe to work on one system, but then when I had to move it to a different system, it would just be a mess. Uh, some libraries would be outdated, uh, making things to work will be very, very difficult. And just out of sheer frustration, like, I, uh, we developed this tool. And uh, yeah, that's just, the, that's just the background. So we found like uh, a few problems with radio astronomy software. Uh, and the first one was that uh, the software is often written by astronomers, PhD students, postdocs, and not by software developers. And it's not very stable. It's very difficult to build, it's not well documented, hard to install, and if you want to install more than one package on the same system, good luck to you. Um, and uh, basically, we had CASA, which can do most things. However, CASA does not play well with other, with other things, so it's very rigid. And if you are using CASA, you basically have to stick to CASA. So this, this was not a very uh, good en en environment, I found. But so this is from 2014. Some of these things may have changed. Uh, but let, let's go on. So basically, the, the goal for any pipeline was just, I'm gonna make the pipeline work, work on my system, work on, on whatever I'm doing it, and everything else was not, very, was not really considered. Okay, so uh, the, when I was basically coming up with Stimela, so basically the, the main principles were I wanted to be able to do rep reproducible reductions. I wanted to, it to, be, to be simple and to be, to be portable. So basically, given a given data set, I want to be able to take my, my pipeline, which is a, a, some sort of script, uh, give it to another person, and given the same data and similar resources, they should be able to reproduce what I, what I have done without fiddling too much with uh, system admin duties. And simplicity, it must be easy, easy to build, easy to understand, so that like someone who is not an expert can just uh, read, the, read your, your, your pipeline and sort of get an, an idea of what's going on and make uh, modifications if needed. And for possibility, uh, you want to minimize the, the dependence on the, on the system, on the OS, on libraries, on the, on the system, and so on and uh, it must be easy to share. Or even if you have your scripts on, on GitHub, you must be able just to share them with your, with your collaborators and they must be able to, uh, to, to, to use them as they want and run them on their, on their own system and, and so on. So this basically, in this way, we would aid uh, easier collaborations. So just to summarize, we want a well-documented uh, and flexible framework basically that will allow us to create pipelines uh, which are robust, which are rep reproducible, and which produce uh, 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 quality data products. Okay. Uh, but uh, as, I, as I, ju I just said now ab about quality is that reliable is not good enough. So you may have a robust pipeline, but it may produce like mediocre science results. So what we also need to have is the ability to 
to keep up uh, with novel and cutting edge uh, tools in the science. So we also want the, the flexibility to plug and play uh, new tools as, as, they are, as they are being developed so, so that we, we keep up with whatever is, is current. So this is just like uh, what happened with the first task that, that I was given. So at the top, uh, this one, this is uh, Oleg's image. Oh, I, sh I should use this actually. So this is Oleg's, uh, Oleg's uh, five million to one dynamic range image. Uh, I think this was around 2013 when this was, was produced. It's VLA data uh, of 3C147. So it was a beautiful image, a lot of press about it. So yeah, it was a, it was a, a good time and this is when almost I came into the field. And uh, I was basically my duty was to try to improve on this. We had, we had new data from the VLA and yeah. And basically when we had Stimela, uh, I think after, couple, maybe after like six months or so, we were able already to, to do much better, but then I only uh, submitted my PhD much later. But we were able to, using this new framework, uh, to produce a better, a better image. And uh, this image was produced using Cubicle at the time, which was still very, very new, as well as DDFacet, which was also very, very new. But like, because of the ease of being able to plug and play new, new tools, we were able to do this uh, quite uh, easily. Okay. So, yeah, let me just go to do that. And uh, basically, and the problem is now, how do we do this more consistently? So these are just like uh, six points that I think are, are important whenever trying to build either a pipeline or a system for creating pipeline like Stimel. So version control and issue tracking is very important, as I'm sure every, every one of us would agree here. Uh, and for, for doing that, we have, Git, we have GitHub, GitLand, SourceForge, uh, SVN, the latter two may be uh, outdated now, but you know, whatever you want to use. Uh, you need to have good documentation. Uh, I know it can be very uh, boring and laborious, but it's, it, it's very good if you want people to be able to use your software and be able to troubleshoot and figure out if things go wrong. Another thing is uh, packaging. Uh, packaging is also uh, very important. You must make sure that your people are able to access your tools, uh, again, without too much problem. So just like a simple pip install or apps get install uh, is very useful. Okay, uh, continuous integration, you know, make sure that you're testing your, your software regularly and that uh, if, if there are any bugs, you're able to catch them quickly before other people face them. Isolation and portability, uh, we use Docker for this. Uh, because, as I said, uh, installing more than one of these tools on one system can be very difficult. So what we do is we isolate everything and then, uh, pa and then release it as different, um, as different packages. Okay, and uh, we also try to go for simplicity and, and for this we use, you can use Python, Jupyter, YAML, or, or any, other, any other system. So this is the, the design of, of, of uh, Stimela. You can have any tool that you want. Uh, usually we get these tools from either PyP or Ken Suite, and then we wrap them up in containers, or we can put it in a, in a VN now, or you don't have to have any, any wrapper. We have some Python backend, which will give you access to all the tools in a simplified, uh, unified interface. This is where you do your scripting. And here I just have a simple, two simple examples. It's one example using both the YAML and the, and the Python interface. So this is basically, uh, a very uh, fictitious uh, self cut loop where you do some, where you calibrate and then you, uh, you image. So this is just how you do it in YAML and how you do it in Python. And running it in Python, it's similar exec and then, sorry, similar run in Python and then similar exec for, 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 for YAML. Okay, and uh, so this is not just me. It's a, it's a sort of a big group now. It started out as just me, and then Ben came along uh, to work with, and then really has done, I think, the most work uh, uh, behind me. So, and, I, and, and of course, there's other people also who are working on this, and yeah, it's not just me. I think, yeah, as I say, it takes a, a large group, not really too large, but it takes a group of people to actually create good software. Uh, that is also useful and usable by other people. 
And uh, one of the things which I appreciate about, about Stimela is that it makes the barrier to entry for, for people who are just coming into the field, as I was uh, six years ago, it makes it much easier for people just to start and hit the ground running without having to worry about many of the things that we, I, I had to worry about six years ago. So uh, there have been multiple students now who can just start their project without having to worry about installing things and making sure it works on their, on their system and so on. So it's just easier for people just to focus on their science and focus on, on uh, optimizing their, their pipelines. Okay, and there are two uh, pipelines. I think they are probably uh, the most used pipelines for Meerkat data, and uh, they are both based on Stimela. The first one is Caracal, and the other one is for Meerkat. Uh, Caracal, this is the Caracal team here, including Ben. But Ben, uh, again, out of being frustrated with the team and things going slowly, uh, ventured out and created for, for Meerkat because his PhD was, uh, was due soon, so there is also Femia cats, but, but basically they are they are quite similar, uh, quite similar tools. And then I think Ben is going back to Caracal now that uh, he's done what he needed to do with Femia cats. But it's still a very useful tool either way. And uh, this is like uh, so some nice images uh, from from uh, Femia cats. Uh, the top one shows direction independent calibration that Ben has done, basically through Stimela and at Femia cats. And uh, I think some tools that he, he had to write particularly for this, but it, once he wrote the tool, uh, it was easy just to plug it into to his pipeline because Stimela allows you an easy way to do this as well. And uh, just a similar thing on the, on the bottom image. Um, these are some of the cool uh, results we have had from the Caracal pipeline. Uh, this, the top image, the blue top image, was uh, a discovery of this uh, co collimated synchrotron emission by Mpati. She's uh, sit sitting uh, at the back there. Um, again, we used the Caracal pipeline. Like It was just easy to get this image. It didn't really take much effort. But now we are putting even more effort, especially Landman, uh, to study this more, to image it better, because it's, it's a very complicated field. And if you want to uh, get uh, high dynamic range imaging of this, you have to be very careful. And this is what Landman is doing. Uh, please see his poster. And also, uh, this is a nice image from uh, Eli, Eli Mirkett data of uh, Phonex A. And the image on the left is uh, basically these are image these are meerkat images of the um, GW17 GW17 or A17. This was the first detected measure of a neutron bi uh, binary system, and I used uh, Caracal basically to do the meerkat follow-up of the of the radio afterglow. And there's also student projects which use the Caracal pipeline. Again, students can get their data, especially there was a call for students and they were prioritized in the first open time uh, for Meerkat. And, they, and many were able to use this Caracal pipeline to go through their data and uh, it just made things easier for them. I think everyone here has now graduated or is in the process of graduating, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, a few words about distribution, but I'm not, I'm not really going to say much here. So Stimela itself uh, does not really uh, concern itself with optimizing, uh, does not concern itself with, with optimizing uh, things too much. Basically, it's a very high level tool, so we also, um, also optimize things at, at, at the highest level. So I'm not really going to go too much into this. And these are just the conclusions, uh, stuff that I've already said. It's portable, usable, uh, easier barrier to entry for people who are, who are, who are coming in. If you want to try something quickly, this is basically uh, what you want to do. And then you, you also, if you want to build a robust pipeline, this is definitely the tool for you. So thank you for your time. Uh, I see we have a question by uh, Oleg. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I've got a question to tee you up with. Uh, we've heard about other workflow management frameworks at this conference. Uh, how does this compare to CWL? How does this relate to CWL? Mm -hmm. And also you showed parallelization. Can we have loops? Can we have conditionals? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So actually, uh, with, with Stimel, I think in the early stages, I tried to adopt CWL. But CWL is a very rigid standard, and it was very hard to make very simple things work. So the, the, the effort, and I even at some point had a compiler, which will basically, you could write some Python code or YAML code, and it, 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 it would compile to CWL. 
but this is what I found to be not the best way to go. So CWL is very good, but I think they have domain-specific things to radio astronomy that they just don't cater for, so we just, this was a, a better way. And yes, uh, you can do loops uh, and conditionals uh, in, in Stimulator, which you cannot do in CWL. Cool, thanks. Cool. Uh, let's thank the speaker again for the interesting talk.